Hey everyone, I uh, thought I'd do another video on DCS A10 since people seem to enjoy the last one and I'm having a lot of fun with this game. Um, so today's video is going to be a little different than my last one. Uh, we blew stuff up in the last one, which is always fun, but this time we're going to put some effort into flight fundamentals and not blow anything up. Uh, whenever you have one of these high fidelity games, or as some call it, the infamous study sim, it pays to have a good understanding of how the equipment's being portrayed and how it actually works. Uh, those of us who have any kind of background in general aviation are going to recognize a lot from this vid, and I do assume that the listener knows basic airplane terminology, but just in case I included some handy reference material in my description. You don't have to be a pilot in real life to enjoy this game, and uh, please leave feedback if you feel I'm being too technical here. Today I'm going to go over the A-10's trim system. Now, as always, the trim is used to alleviate load on the pilot, and it's pretty important to have in an older design like the A-10. Uh, in addition to trim, I'm going to go over the A-10's manual reversion flight control system, or MRFCS, which is intimately linked to the trim system. Now, in my training scenario, I've just started both engines to provide hydraulic power to the control surfaces, and I'm going to run a quick function check on all of them now. Now, like most airplanes, the A-10 has a set of ailerons, but it's got redundant elevators and redundant rudders, and it's also got redundant hydraulic systems that power all the control surfaces, which is pretty typical if you're looking at a system that's designed to get shot at, and it was designed to be fielded during the Cold War. Now, part of the reason I think there's always confusion on how trim works in these flight sim games is because you don't really have the feedback from the airplane that you would in real life and a home joystick. Even with a force feedback stick, it's really not the same because you can't see the position of the stick in relation to where you are. And that's really what trim governs. It governs the load that the airplane's feeding back to you and where it wants to rest at. So in this, I'm going to focus on the stick when I trim it. Uh, and I'm going to test trim, and we can see how the stick position will change as the airplane trims itself. In addition, there's probably going to be some confusion on what the trim tabs on the control surfaces actually do in the normal flight regime when the uh, reversion control system is not on. So I'm going to trim forward and you can see how it moves forward when I trim. The stick is going to want to rest where it's trimmed to and I'm going to cut outside and we're going to look at what the control surfaces are actually doing. Remember, when you've got hydraulics there's very little need to use the trim tab and as you can see here the elevator is going to be moving uh, in relation to where the stick is and the ailerons are going to do the same. The trim tabs are going to stay where they are. Now there's also a trim button that you can set up in your controls that when you hold it down and you move the stick, it trims the stick. So it's kind of analogous to the hat. It's purely a matter of preference what you use. I prefer the hat, but it's up to you. And finally, there's an emergency override switch on the emergency flight control panel that makes the hat on the left there control the trim the same way the hat on the stick controls the trim. So, under normal flight control, the trim tabs are not really used in the way that you would expect if you come from the background that I do, you know, flying little Cessnas where the trim tab is the only thing that you have to alleviate load on the pilot. And that's the trim system. Now let's take a look at the MRFCS mode. Uh, this mode is for when hydraulic power loss is either imminent or has just occurred, and it's going to prevent you from falling out of the sky by giving you control over your airplane. The uh, MRFCS mode is accessed through the emergency flight control panel down at the left-hand side here. And I'm going to turn it on. And the first thing you're going to see is the hydraulic power on the hydraulic meters there are going to go basically down to zero. And the other thing that you're going to notice is that outside of your plane, the ailerons are going to drop down. And it's basically manual flight now. The linkages are directly controlled by you and not the hydraulic system. And that means you're going to have to use a lot of strength, I guess if you were really flying this thing, to actually make it do anything. Uh, forward and back controls the elevator like before, but back and forth, the ailerons are non-functional, so you have the trim tabs. And the trim tabs are the only thing that you can use to control the ailerons when it's in the MRFCS mode. Now, rudders are pretty much the same, except you don't have hydraulic assist. But elevator control 
is kind of interesting. Remember we talked about trim and how the trim tab isn't used? Well, you can see here I'm trying to trim it and the stick isn't doing anything. And it's going to be completely non-functional when I go left and right, but when I go back and forth is actually going to control the elevator trim tab. So what you have here essentially is a multi-ton Cessna 152, the only difference being that your trim tab is electric. And that's pretty scary if you think about it because the only thing keeping you from falling out of the sky at this point is your muscles and this little electric trim tab here in addition to the trim tabs you have on your ailerons. We're getting a little heavy on time here, so I'm going to split this up into a part two. And in part two, we'll talk about how all of this works in the air, the trim system, along with the MRFCS, and how to control the plane in normal flight with trim, as well as when you get a hydraulic failure on your hands. I uh, hope this was helpful, and thanks for watching.